Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Alicia and I'm the owner of Alicia Be Creative. Today's tutorial is a, another Christmas holiday themed tutorial with this Merry and Bright handled 30 ounce tumbler. You guys know that I will show you all of the supplies that I use as well as link anything that I do use in the description box as well as any discount code to save yourself a little bit of extra money. As always, if you love today's video, give this video a huge thumbs up and subscribe to my my channel, but let's go ahead and jump right A 30 ounce grippy tumbler. This is from Hog Tumblers. I do have a discount code in the description box for anybody who is brand new to Hog and wants to try out their cups. So I have used a cup like this before in a previous tutorial. So I will also link that in the bottom of the description box as well in case you want to check out another design that I've done with the same style cup. So the first thing I need to do with this cup is I'm going to remove the handle. Now you certainly could keep the handle attached if that's your preference. For me, it feels like it's much easier easier to work around the handle once it's off because it's a smaller section to have to work on and it makes things a little bit more seamless I find than if I try and just tape around the handle especially because I know I'm going to be doing a bunch of different a bunch of like taping of the bottom that'll be every time I epoxy so I really want to make sure that I am not needing to tape off everything every single time so the handle piece kind of just pops off that center section and then there's a screw that helps attach the handle to the cup you just unscrew that and i just set that aside in the box for me to use later so on these style cups i really do like to keep the bottom stainless steel certainly again your preference i just feel like it gives this style cup a cleaner look to have that sort of bottom piece stainless steel you certainly though could as i did in a previous tutorial go in and add a little bit of glitter on the very bottom sort of in that indentation but i'm going to put a little bit of electrical tape down here and then i will use my cup edging tool to trim the tape so i have a nice straight crisp line at the bottom which will be the line that i follow every time I go to tape off this cup when I need to epoxy the tumbler. So now that the cup is sort of, you know, the handle's been removed and I've taped off the bottom, it's now time to do our typical process of prepping, which of course is scuffing the surface with a sanding block and then wiping this down with a bit of 91% rubbing alcohol and a paper towel. So as I mentioned, I feel like every time I do prep, I use anything between a 60 and 80 grit sand block. It really doesn't matter. The goal here really is just to really scuff up the surface and give your epoxy something to sort of grip onto, um, you know, all the layers of epoxy in your paint, et cetera, to really give a better hold of everything on your cup for its longevity. So once I've cleaned up my area, cleaned up the cup, I'm gonna take this over and just apply a flat white spray paint. And then we're gonna come right back here and get into the glittering process. Before I go off though to prep this white, I did decide that I was going to tape this section of the handle off first. So I only tape off this portion the initial first initial time so this is the only time that i tape off this metal section where the cup the handle connects to the cup i don't apply tape to this section after i've done the first two epoxy coats and that's because at that point i've built up enough epoxy around this section that i can be really careful when i'm applying epoxy with my hands to be able to get around this area without getting epoxy on it if that makes sense so i'm really being a little bit due diligent here with applying the tape here you certainly do not have to especially because in the event you do get epoxy on this section by accident as you're epoxying it really would be easy to just pop that epoxy off with just a hot craft knife um, but I did tape this off initially for the paint process and the first two coats of epoxy just to make sure I could build up a little of that epoxy and avoid me getting anything on here so we're going to glitter here and I'm using a brand new product at least for me this is one coat wonder from Callan Grace Designs it's a glitter adhesive you guys know me um, I have a love-hate relationship with Mod Podge and I typically like to do those you know other glitter adhesives 
when I am doing tutorials just because it saves me having to mix up epoxy, especially if I'm not doing any epoxy work at the same time that I'm filming for tutorials. So this is a newer glitter adhesive that I have been trying out and really enjoying. It is really easy to apply, very similar to Mod Podge, but I do find it is a little bit thicker in consistency. You guys also know that I have used on my channel recently uh, adhesive apothecaries glitter, like their glitter adhesive as well and I like that as well so I really like both of these but if you are someone like me who really like hates having to do multiple coats of epoxy or multiple coats of Mod Podge when it comes to glitter application I would definitely urge you to check this glitter adhesive out because I do feel like I only needed to do one, the one coat and I didn't even need to do any touch-ups. So the first coat of glitter that I added there, that was Falori from Peachy Olive Glitters. That was just a very chunky white that I laid down as sort of like a foundation all around the cup. And then of course I'm gonna go back in with a finer cut and this is Opal Daydream for my Asia Creations. A really fine white glitter here to be able to cover up the rest of the glue that is applied to this. So one thing I would mention, um, this did go on the, the turner for a couple coats of uh, epoxy. I used Flynn's Sisters Fast Cure. And the one thing that I failed to do, not even thinking about it, was I forgot to roll my cup. So you guys have seen me do that in a couple tutorials before, but typically if I'm using chunky glitter and uh, a chunky and a find together, I really want to make sure that I roll my cup in wax paper or parchment paper or just pat it down with my gloved hand before I go to epoxy it. That way this all stays down. The chunky glitter typically likes to lift and give me a really hard time when I need to epoxy, which then results in more coats of epoxy. So I would have saved myself a couple extra epoxy coats if I would have just remembered to roll my cup before I epoxied it. Um, so you could certainly roll it right after you've applied your glitter, roll it in that that parchment paper, or if you forget to, that's okay. You could also go over it with another coat of your glitter glue, whatever you're using as your adhesive, and then go ahead and um, roll that right after you've applied that sort of sealer to keep everything flattened down. So after I did my two coats of initial epoxy, this is gonna go back on for a third coat just because it is still bumpy. And because I'm going to be applying both vinyl and a peekaboo look to the bottom of this cup, I do wanna make sure I'm working with a really smooth surface. So I really did spend quite a bit of time scuffing down all of those sharp pieces of glitter that were sticking up after my first two coats. We're then going to retape the bottom and get this back on the turner for another coat of epoxy so that it is nice and smooth. So we're back now after that coat of epoxy and we are going to again now get into sort of our vinyl work here. So this is a semi-transparent print from BAMP Custom Creations. It was in one of my most recent subscription boxes from her. And so I'm going to be using this really pretty print for this design. It's got like poinsettias and some little um, ornaments as well. It just is such a cute design and really just sort of screams festive Christmas for me. So I have just decided to cut that vinyl right in half. I'm only going to apply vinyl to the top half of this cup because that is the straightest section of the cup. And if you've ever tried to apply vinyl to something that's on a taper, it is a pain in the rear end. So I decided to keep my focus of the vinyl on the top section and not to attempt to get any of the vinyl on where the curve begins on this cup. So once I've sized it to my cup, I'm gonna go ahead and apply this just like I would any other vinyl wrap. I'm gonna adhere one side very close to that section of where the handle connects. I then will take my craft knife and trim out where the handle, uh, you know, the little handle piece is on the cup. And then I'm gonna flip this over and use my big squeegee tool to be able to push on the rest of that vinyl nice and smoothly. So working around this piece was just so much easier than trying to work around the entire handle, which is why I mentioned in the beginning when I was prepping this cup, why I like to remove the handle. Now, obviously for a lot of cups, this isn't always possible, but I do love these grippies because you can remove the handles and be able to work around that, you know, that stump before the handle goes and not have to try and work around something as bulky as the actual handle itself. 
itself. And so that's why I do prefer to remove them versus leaving them on. But whatever works best for you, if you'd rather just tape around and sort of trim out where you need to for applying things like vinyl around a handle, you certainly could. I just seemed to think that it was easier for me in the long run to start with the handle off and then apply it at the end again. So again, as I get to the other side, I'm just trimming around that section that is gonna be obviously where my handle will go back on, making sure I don't have anything attached to that silver section there. And then I'll trim my vinyl up just like I normally would. So trimming up my seam where I have a bit of overlap, just making sure to keep a slight overlap so we don't see any of that extra glitter underneath in between where the two edges of the vinyl meet. And then we'll trim off all the excess that's on the top of this vinyl as well. So this vinyl is a bit thicker than maybe some of the other like opaque vinyls that I use. And so I really want to make sure that this is really stuck to the cup nicely. Anytime I'm trying to do vinyl over top of glitter, I do want to make sure that I leave more room at the top and expose some of that glitter. That way I don't get any crinkling of my vinyl, which really happens most often when I'm trying to apply vinyl over top of glitter. So. <clears throat> to avoid that from happening and avoid any issues with my epoxy coat creating any buckling in between you know the glitter and the vinyl layer i use my cup edging tool to trim off that top section so i'll have a section on the cup here which you'll see as i remove the excess here where the glitter is going to be exposed that way i can make sure that i still am keeping a really good coat um, of epoxy at the top of my cup and not making sure that i have any issues with a potential broken seal or an opportunity for water to get in between those layers with the vinyl so close to the top so after that was done i am now going to right on top of the vinyl i'm going to apply some painters tape towards the bottom edge here and we're doing this because I'm going to, again, create the bottom is going to be this peekaboo design. And so instead of using a uh, spray paint, though, we're going to be using acrylic paint as my peekaboo. So you guys have typically seen me use spray paint. But I decided to this time to show you guys that you can not, you don't have to just use spray paint, that you can use just regular acrylic paint to be your you know, the color you put on top as well. So these are just present SVGs that I took the offset of. So I found a design in Cricut Design Space and I just took the offset of that present design to create my stencils for my peekaboo. So after I have cut those, I'm going to just apply them where I need them to go on my cup just in various spots making sure that i'm filling up most of that white space down there with the presents that i have already cut out here and then i can go ahead and trim off obviously anything that goes over the bottom or goes over that top edge you certainly can cut them now like i'm doing or you can wait until you of course have you know covered your entire cup with your your spray paint or your acrylic paint whatever you're using and then um, you know trim that stuff up later or just remove it afterwards so once i've gotten everything sort of trimmed here which you don't necessarily have to do i will tape off the bottom section again because again we're trying to keep that section stainless steel only and so i'm just going to put painter's tape on the bottom i'm not going to go with electrical tape because we're just using acrylic paint and in the event i get a little bit under the tape it's not going to be a big deal i can just clean that up with a little bit of alcohol to remove it but once i've gotten the bottom taped back up we're now going to get into doing some acrylic paint over top of this sort of white present bottom area of this tumbler. So the acrylic paint I'm using, really cheap and easy acrylic paint. It doesn't need to be anything special, of course, but you can use any color that you want. I decided to go with green. There's a lot of red in the actual vinyl print. And so I decided to go with green for the bottom to stick with the traditional colors of red and green. I found just three green colors that I found in my craft paint, my acrylic paint stash, and just decided to go with those. So instead of just doing one color over the bottom, I decided to make this or turn this into more of a brush stroke look. So I have done a couple other brush stroke designs on my channel, which I will remember to link in the description box as well. 
But essentially brush stroke cups are just using different colors paint of colors of paint ones that complement each other and literally using like fluffy brushes to again literally just create brush strokes. So the key though to brush stroke tumblers and this is something that I learned from watching an amazing creator that like does the most amazing brush stroke cups that are just gorgeous is you want to make sure that you dry your layers of paint. With acrylic paint, especially depending on which ones you buy or what colors you buy, they typically can be a bit transparent, right? And we don't want it to look like a clumpy mess. And when you, have you've ever tried to apply paint over paint while it's still wet, it creates sort of this clumpy, gloopy mess, right? And so in order to avoid that and really still be able to keep really crisp brush stroke lines, you wanna make sure you're drying your layers of paint in between each time you're applying it. So making sure you're not applying your colors too close together and before you go in with your next color on top of the other, making sure that that initial layer is completely dry before you attempt to brush another color over top of it or up against it. That way you don't get any sort of clumping or muddling, which can happen if you're applying wet paint on top of wet paint. So I've gone in with all three colors and I just do this back and forth sort of method where I do a couple brush strokes, then I dry it do a couple brush strokes, then I dry it until I have covered the entire bottom section, all the glittered section with my my uh, strokes of paint. So once I'm satisfied with the amount of paint I've got on here, I've got a nice blend and color of all three colors and I've gotten the brush stroke look that I am kind of going for here. I'm going to dry it for the final time. And at that point, I now can begin to remove my stencils. So I do want to make sure that this paint though at this point is fully dry because I want to make sure that I don't accidentally pull up paint that is still wet. So after I have, of course, dried this thoroughly, I'm going to remove all of my tape that is attached to here and then get into removing those stencils nice and carefully. So I did use a removable vinyl as my uh, stencil here. You guys have known that I've typically we'll use like stencil vinyl, which is fine to use as well. I just didn't have any on hand. So I just use a removable vinyl that I could find. And this was really easy to get to pull up. So in the event that you don't have stencil vinyl, removable vinyl works just as well. Um, so don't feel like you have to go out and just buy something specifically for working on a peekaboo cup. Your removable vinyl works just as well. So after I've gotten all of the present decals removed, I then am going to remove the final piece of the tape on the bottom and then I am going to add the decals that will go on this cup. So at this point, I still haven't done any epoxy whatsoever. So I've applied the vinyl, I've applied my paint, I've applied my stencils, and I have not yet taken this back to the turner to do a coat of epoxy. So I am I am someone who like, if I can cut corners, I'm gonna cut corners. And so this is a way that I typically do it. Instead of continuing to do, every time I do a step, do a coat of epoxy, I don't want a super bulky cup. So I try and get as much work as I can do on the cup as possible before I get it into the next coats of epoxy. So this is a merry and bright decal. I am using the gold vinyl from from Banff Custom Creations. She has absolutely gorgeous metallic 12 by 12 sheets that you can pick up from her website. She sent it in her last subscription box and they are just absolutely gorgeous to be able to use lots of different colors as well. So definitely check that out. But I just did an offset of that decal that I found in Cricut Design Space. And then I printed the inner portion of the present look from Cricut Design Space on that same gold sheet of vinyl. So I'm literally applying this directly over my paint. Now, the one thing you do want to be careful of, of course, we don't want to accidentally pull up any paint. So just be careful when you're applying your transfer tape on top of your painted surface. Really make sure that that is really, really dry, <laughs> like extra dry before you go in and add your decals over top. Um, but this saved me a step because then I didn't have to put this on the turner for a coat of epoxy and then wait to add my decals. I decided to do all my decal work here and now and sort of leave that as is. So after my decals are applied, I now just need to trim up all of the overlap, anything that overlaps over the edge or overlaps over of the top. And then I can seal this typically with polycrylic just to make sure I don't get any, um, you know, 
repelling of my epoxy um, and then do my next coat of epoxy. So it's gotten one final coat of epoxy, but I did wait to do my washi tape work until the very end. And that's because I didn't want the, the vinyl to show um, where the edge of the vinyl was under the washi tape. So I wanted a layer in between that, a nice another small um, smooth surface, I should say, to make sure that I had a nice smooth surface to work on to apply the washi tape so it didn't show the stencils from the presence or the outline of the vinyl underneath the washi tape. So this is just gold metallic washi tape again from Hobby Lobby. Literally my favorite my favorite pack to grab and I grab so much of it every time I'm at the craft store. Definitely won't be running out anytime soon but we're just going to use that to sort of frame out this vinyl section. So a little bit on the bottom and then another strip at the top where we have that glitter exposed at the top and then this goes on the turner for the final coat of epoxy before I'm going to adhere the handle. So adhering the handle is super simple. As long as you've kept that silver section, that stainless steel section nice and clean and free of epoxy, you literally should be able to reapply this handle in no time. You put the handle back on there, screw that back to the cup. It really does stick on real nice apply that sort of um, seamed section there and that is literally it. So this was the tutorial for today. I do hope that you enjoyed today's merry and bright YouTube tutorial. As always, if you enjoyed this video or if you've enjoyed any of my videos on the channel, definitely be sure to give this one a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and you guys know that I'll see you in the next one. Bye.